just zaps it and he beams it in. Yep. It's a lot to take in sometimes, but he is an endless pool of that. That being said, everybody, game number one of winning semifinals. We got Ugibido and Spylox going up against Coco and Nin. And let's see what they got. Already Coco dominating the stage with a lot of presence. Gonna be beating up his own teammate a little bit, but you know what happens to the best of us when you have a massive lance to wield? And that's already gonna be one stock on. What is happening? Now, of course, there isn't a lot of history between these two teams because they talked about it earlier. Coco and Spyrox used to be teammates, so that's going to make this potential elimination maybe a little bit more heartbreaking or might make you feel a little it's bit a little better. Tense. Like when tense. you show your ex that you moved on and you kind of won after the relationship because your current partner is hotter than you. Alternatively, she could also see how awful of a time you're having at the moment. That is true. And then she's gonna feel the one. She's gonna be the yeah. one that feels vindicated. That in all is of the that. risky take. So honestly, a lot on the line here. Yeah, absolutely. Coco, the one living so far in Herbador. Oh my goodness. Herbador already on final stocks. As I say that, Spyrox also on final stocks. Coco and Munir coming out crazy. Coco not even in the red on first stock yet. And Munir, like, yeah, in midway through orange. Not great compared to Coco, but way great compared to Herbidor and Spyrox. Coco is chilling at the moment. In fact, making it back onto the stage here, nice and safe. Okay, huge opening, love that interruption. That, that side who did not actually KO, they really need it so badly. Coco is still somehow holding onto this first stock against all odds. Herbidor is gonna be knocked out. Muni is gonna be put down onto his last stock, but at what cost? Look at Blue Team, they're suffering. They're not having a good time. The only thing that was able to take out Coco's first stock was Munir because he picked up Spyrox at the exact same time. So it was absolutely worth. Coco going crazy, 504 damage, 377 coming out from Munir as well. Great work from this team. We got a little bit of a peek in those uh, in those replays of the last set, and now we're getting from the current set that we just watched. It was three stocks to zero by the time that all things were said and done. Spyrox was not allowed to play that video game. Under 200 damage. damage. That's rough. Tough. Yeah. It is game one, though. It is game one. So maybe, you know, there's always a comeback potential, but that was one of the fastest Three, game ones I've seen two, in twos. Those one, don't draw. happen very often, I feel like, at this point in the bracket. So we'll just have to see what Spylox and Urbidori are just kind of able to show off here. Let's see if they can match that kind of damage output that Coco and Munir are really just dominating with. But right now, trying to go out there through the edge guard. Munir, okay, huge follow-up. Once at NSIG as well. Not going to be able to find it, though. And just continuing to go in. Oh, Ubidoy has taken so many different hits. Oh, Munir, you saw that GC side signature coming out. Does finally get the KO with the recovery compared to the signature. But last game, Munir did such a good job. Seven signatures were thrown out, 71% of them hit. I believe that is six out of seven. Taz, don't check me on that math. That's Taz is saying yes. Yes. All right, cool. That's confirmed. The math is confirmed. If it's wrong, blame Tazaraki. That's always a good option, I yeah, feel like. Yeah, you can yeah. add him, at Tazalol on Twitter. Make sure Anytime to DM you have them. an issue, even if audio related to Bill Hollow. Yeah, if you but want some some uh, skins early, make sure to add Tazalo on Twitter. All right, we got a different game on our hands. And it is evident by the fact that Coco has lost his first stop. Yes. That did not happen last game, at least this point into the match. Spylogs cleaned it up with that GCD light into the ground pound. And that's also going to be Moody off the top. This is what I wanted to see. Blue team, they were stumbling last game. They're finally finding their footing. Now it's not totally even quite yet. They have a lot of damage to make up. But look at Spylox. Oh my god. Going crazy. You're trying to do his best, but he's taking a lot of damage as well. Same thing goes for Herbador. There was a little bit of an interruption there. Herbador, of course, playing the Jala. That is a low defense legend. We were just talking about that with the Ember mm -hmm. and Fozy in a previous set. Herbador is doing a much better job this game of staying on pace with everybody because Spyrox is in the red on second, Munir is in the red on second, and Coco is in the red on second. Meanwhile, Herbador on the early stages of yellow on final. Now Munir meeting him on final as well. Oh, but I wanted to follow up with the recovery. They were just kind of on two different pages. They didn't actually find it. Spyrox does make it back onto the stage, though. That spacing on that GCD light, oh my god. That was from a mile away. And now, here's a 2v1 combo. Huge damage going to be inbound, but oh, does miss the, the neutral. That's so brutal. That side light into the neutral air as the true option ends up getting dropped right after that. Spyrox is going to fall onto final stock as well. Spyrox almost hit his teammate up, following up off of Moon Near, I believe that was. 
You can just apply the same advice to a baby. Just don't drop it. You have to keep up that 2v1 combo in that moment. But that is going to be Ubidoing's first stock card. Now Spyrox is fighting this 1v2. And it is actually really doable. And it is between Spyrox and Coco. It's, it's so poetic that it comes down to these two. Now, it, it would be more poetic if we were in a Game 5 situation or a Grand Finals Game 10 situation. But this is still Game 2. So there are more games to play in this mm -hmm. set. This is necessarily not deterministic of the outcome so far. And it's relatively even. We're coming in about a minute and 50, or sorry, two minutes and 50 seconds into this game. Coco seems to be controlling the pace of this a little bit. Spyrox kind of playing defensively, throwing his weapon a lot. The sidelight into the side air, makes the connection, gets the KO, and Coco and Munir take that game. Okay, so the thing to really take note of, of course, is the difference between game one and two game two. We are seeing an upward trend, and the upward trend is, of course, how well we're doing against Pylos are doing. They were able to get a lot more even footing this game. They seem to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe, um, with Coco and Munir more so than game one. So that means, in my mind, game three is actually kind of up in the air. Yes, it's still favored for Red Team. Yes, it's still favored for Coco and Munir. But I feel like this has three, the potential two, to be reversed to go one, if this trend four. continues. And one thing that is a major difference as well, at least this time on Coco and Munir's side compared to Spyrox and Herbidor is this time Munir put out 15 signatures and only hit 20% of them. Throwing out a lot of signatures is normal. If you're a Zariel player, in this case the Devil mm -hmm. Jin, that is very normal. That's what you should be doing. That's the Zariel stuff that we like to look for. But if it's not connecting... It can be a little bit rough. It can be a little bit tough, as long as you're not getting punished for it. That's but correct. That's all that it comes down to at the end of the day. Munir able to... Oh! I'm surprised that wasn't okay. a side light recovery off the top, and instead just went through the neutral instead. Uh, that was a bit of an interesting decision. Ubidoy going to be losing out on his first stock. Spyrox getting hunted down by Mooney, who's just looking, looking, looking. Nice little whiff punish, gets that side, and then immediately yep. switches back up on Coco. Says, hey, I did not forget about you. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to get that damage in. But they need to make some stocks happen now, because Spyrox's stock is going to expire in a couple of moments. Herbidor is really starting to take a lot of damage on the second stock as well. Now in the red. Meanwhile, everybody else is still on first stock until just now. Spyrox over on the edge. Oh, Munir with the ground pound all the way up uh. there. Spyrox with the whiff on the save. He had all the time in the world to grab that. There was virtually no threat there. And I think they were just both on different pages at that moment. Maybe the line of communication wasn't perfect yet, given that, I mean, Coco and Spyrox used to team and now they broke up. So, quote unquote, relatively new this team. This is a little bit of a here. fresh hoop, you know, thing that they got going on between yeah. the two. It's going to take a lot of months to build up to that save exact level as you had before. But that is going to be losing the stock off the side there, and Ubidor uh, totally gone off the map at the moment. It's just Spyrox all alone now, by himself. He does have a weapon, and he's been able to, okay, he was able to find multiple hits without being punished until he took that gauntlet recovery. See what Munir wants to stick with it is that bow. This set's done. It's done. Look, look at what's going on here. There's nothing that you can do to stop this. Oh, they got the, the KO on that too. Well. I did not think that was quite going to knock out with the recovery. Obviously, they it. knew better. They had that pre-planned, pre-ordained, ready to go. And you see the damage across the board. And it's another game where Herbidor is just not allowed to play. He's, he's the little brother who takes the, like, crusted and grody Mad Cats controller that may not even be plugged in. 155 damage, no KOs. Meanwhile, like Spyrox, he was also relegated to 207.